you got out to the back lot. Now I noticed, I asked you to send me some pictures, you know, personal pictures from your phone that you took out there. And I was surprised that uh, you had as good a look at the cars. I've talked to a lot of people who have gone to, to Luft and they say, you know, I say, hey, well, show me your pictures. And a lot of times th there's just so many people that you can't get a clear shot. So did you get there early? Did you have a little, uh, did you have a little, uh, a little extra deal to get in there when, the, when there weren't so many people or how did that work out? So if you were putting a car on display, you had to be in there really, really early. We obviously didn't, so we went out there, and uh, but we were kind of smart to the rule. Uh, I learned my lesson last year. I was pretty close. I got lucky. I got a hotel really close last year. This year, uh, I had family that lives actually right there, so I knew the hotel that was right there, the Sheridan Universal. Really nice property, and it's right there. You have the Hilton or the Sheridan. So the day they announced it, within five minutes, I booked it. And I think the hotel sold out that day or the next day. So uh, it was literally a walk out of the hotel. So we got up early and uh, we were still on East Coast time. So, uh, you know, we were three hours ahead. So when it was obviously, you know, seven in the morning uh, there, it was already 10 for us and vice versa. So we were up and we just kind of strolled down there nice and early, fired off some photos and it was, uh, it was good, but it got busy in the afternoon. It was, it was really, really busy. And the weather originally was saying that it was an 85% chance of rain. Oh, wow. And the sky was just like it is here today. It was just absolutely magnificent. It was a beautiful day. And uh, everyone was talking about the cars, and then everyone was throwing in. I still can't believe it didn't rain. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, it was, uh, it was fun to sort of live it vicariously through everybody who went out there. Um, if you try to explain this to someone, you know, who's a car guy, maybe not a Porsche guy, how do you explain it? Like, how, how do you communicate what that event's all about? You've been to two of them now. Um, you sort of learn maybe a little, little trick to get there a little bit earlier to enjoy it. But how do you begin to explain this to somebody who's maybe not in the Porsche world? You know, it really depends on their age, to be honest with you, because if they're, you know, if they're like us, and they were, uh, you know, graduating high school somewhere in the 80s or 70s or 60s even, you know, you go through there and you take a look at it and you say, hey, these are all the cars that I saw when I was growing up. Whereas, you know, the body of the Porsche 911 has changed quite a bit from an original car, from a 60s car, all the way through, uh, all the way through the 964. So when the 993 came out, that was really like the first big change of the look. But it still obviously had the high fenders and the low hood, and it still has that to this day. But for the people that saw those cars, and again, like you said, it's almost like the Harley guys where you have the pan heads and the knuckle heads and, you know, the guys that wanted, you know, the old kickstart Harleys, that's Colty in itself. And you get a lot of those guys that go obviously to Daytona or Sturges or some of the big events. That's kind of what I would explain this as, but it's, uh, it's at such a really high level and it's done very professionally. And there's a lot of supporting people, obviously. Like you said, you got Jeff Swart. You have Triple Zero Magazine. You have the manufacturer, obviously, Porsche, who is there. And, you know, you have everyone else there who is either um, a supporter doing their own air-cooled events. You know, um, the fellas from down south with the DRT. You have uh, just other people that came from Luft in Munich and guys that did Luft in, uh, I think they did one in the UK. There was people, so many people that were there internationally and they really traveled far to get to California. So uh, to your point earlier, that you could see how much it's really taken a life of its own. And it's it, it's one of those things that it's a bucket list if you're a Porsche guy. Yeah, if you're not a Porsche cool. guy, you'll really enjoy it. But if you're a Porsche guy, yeah. it's uh, it's the same analogy I would say is if you're into fun amusement parks, you gotta go to Disney. Yeah. It's the same deal. Yeah, you gotta go, you gotta go check out Look. So for me, I, I wanna get your impression. For me, one of the one of the cars that I was really looking forward to seeing and hearing about was Rod Emery's 356 RSR. And this is basically a, you know, a recreation, uh, I, you know, I won't say a recreation, this is a creation of Rod Emery, sort of what, what he thought a 356 could be one day. And he imagined it himself and put this thing together. Um, just an amazing, amazing car. Um, I've heard everything about the car, you know, people saying that it's it's outrageous, he went too far, to people saying, 
this couldn't have been done any better. Yeah. This is like as perfect as you can get uh, to put together a car. I'm more on that side of the fence. Um, I got introduced to Rod over the course of the last year. Uh, spent some time uh, speaking with his family and my family at an event that I did this year. And they're just such awesome people. Yeah. They are just fantastic people. Like, everybody wants to have a friend like Rod Emery. Absolutely. I mean, they're just, you know, top-notch people. And, and what he has done in that car is just, for me, is amazing. So what was your impression? Did, did you get to see the car close? You know, I, that's what I'm dying. Like, to talk to somebody who was, like, you know, right there that could practically touch the car. What did you think about it? So I did see the car when they unveiled it at the Peterson. So that was on Friday night. So everyone was there. A lot of people were tired. And this thing comes out, and you're like, wait a second. What is that? So everyone went up there. They went to check it out, obviously. They were all there. And from what I understood, they were working on the car, trying to get it finished, all the way up into just a few hours oh, before. Yeah. Yeah. So they were thrashing on it. But the car looked great. It sounded great. It was really, really uh, a cool car. And I'm kind of in a line with um, – it's definitely Porsche. Oh, yeah. But it's definitely got Rod's touch and vision on it, which is very cool on itself. And uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I'm one of the people who personally really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a cool car and uh, had a great sound to it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But part of the deal we did with Triple Zero Magazine was they opened up the vault for uh, the museum itself at the Peterson. So they arranged that they had all the cars in there. And the thing that struck me the most was when Porsche went to Le Mans in the early 50s to where they they had the 1970, 917 there. So in 19 years from 51 to 70, you can see how far they advanced. And when you look at the 917 to even the 919, granted, it's advanced a lot, but when you looked at that original 356 look, yeah. and they went to a 917 in just 19 years, you can really see how they were really pressing, pressing, pressing. Oh, and the yeah. amazing part for me was, how they did it, they didn't have the computers, they didn't have all the stuff. That's the old fashioned, you know, drawing boards, like they say, yeah. you know, CAD system, or, you know, it's none of that. It was the old slide ruler and, you know, penciling it up there, and they were really making it happen. So for me, that was just really the most amazing thing to see when you see the timeline from yeah. uh, in 19 years. So it, it, it was an enjoyable event, and I can't say enough about people going out there. So if it's something that you're thinking about doing, do it. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sharing it with me um, and sharing it with everyone who, you know, who takes time to listen to our little show that we do here, you know, just having fun and spreading the Porsche love, so to speak, uh, because it's something that's definitely on my bucket list. You know, I want to go to it someday. I'm sure I'm going to make it. Uh, we'll figure it out somehow. And it's just awesome when you have that many people in the community that are together all at once. Uh, I know that there was plenty of people out there that I would have loved to have seen. I know uh, you probably saw Kevin Jeanette out there uh, as well, and you know, and uh, and all these guys that are just, you know, they are the quintessential, you know, Porsche guys. I mean, they are just over the top for the brand. They love it and they spread it everywhere they can, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, anything else you want to talk about with the dealership? Um, things coming up or anything at all you want to talk about Porsche South Orlando? Yeah, we got. Uh, we just had our grand opening party officially. It was a little delayed. And the reason being is that we had to wait for uh, the schedules on some of the Porsche brass. We know they wanted to be there for it. And it was great. We actually had Klaus Zelmer, you know, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Joe Lawrence, uh, head of sales for Porsche Cars North America, and then the whole Southern Region team, Dave Kurtz and all the, his folks, as well as Porsche Financial. So it was really, really nice to get everyone there that night. We had a lot of people there. We had a uh, I, you know, again, I felt like I was running for some political office, to be honest with you. I was hugging, kissing, shaking hands with people, kissing babies. I was doing the whole deal. But it was a lot of fun. And, uh, again, you know, everyone that has seen the dealership, whether it was on a video, it was photographs, the big comment that came back, they couldn't believe how big it was. Everyone from Porsche Cars North America was just awestruck by the dealership. And, uh, you know, we run a tight ship, as you know. Yeah. And, uh they couldn't believe the attention to detail that we put into it. So I want to really thank my team yeah. because, you know, I stood up there on the stage, you know, getting all the accolades. But in reality, it was really my team that made yeah. it happen. So yeah. kudos to them. Hats off to them for doing a great job. And uh, we got more events coming up. And I really encourage people to come on out and meet everyone there. And uh, 
if you want to go ahead and get invited to the next stuff, you got to show up, you That's know, good. and you got to, you know, get your name uh, on our mailing list. And the only way to do that yeah. is by coming in person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's tough too. you know, you have a grand opening event and I'm sure that there's people out there, you know, who maybe didn't get invited, who yeah. would have loved to have been there. And it's a tough thing. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, we wanted to really take care of folks that, uh, you know, have purchased cars from us and had come in for service and, and so forth. And so there'll be more. Yeah. We'll do more of these kinds yeah. of things, I'm sure, in the future. Yeah. And, uh, and just continue to, you know, spread that, spread that word around Central Florida that, uh, you know, we're a cool place to come and just talk Porsche and have fun with the brand. Absolutely. So, Chris, it's awesome. Uh, thanks for, you know, saying yes again to come on and, and really giving us that personal sort of perspective about Luft because it is a very special thing and I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy listening to uh, you know what you had to say about it so thanks thanks for coming on again Thank really you, appreciate Mike. it I appreciate all right guys all right so we're gonna switch gears again and uh, and invite some more folks in here and I'm gonna look over to Hank and and we're gonna okay perfect so we're gonna run a clip a little bit and we'll be, we'll be right